Hey gang, I was about to head out to the gym and I said, you know what? Let me do a quick little test prep for my guys. So if you've never been to the channel before, I'm Rob. Good to meet you. Um, if you're looking for any kind of courses, you can head over to itmasterkey.com and enroll inside of a course. Make sure that you watch this entire video so you feel more prepared for the Security Plus exam and actually got a special offer on some practice tests if you're looking for an extra edge. Ready? Let's go. All right, so the Security Plus exam, you got to get a 750 out of 900 to pass the exam. You get a maximum of 100 questions, but most of my students only get around maybe 90 or less, and you got 90 minutes to complete the test. So 90 minutes, 90 questions may not seem like a lot of time, but if you prepare properly, it's more than enough time, okay? All right, so these are the areas of concentration on the exam. You got threats, attacks, and vulnerabilities. Being that it's a security exam, that's kind of expected. Uh, technology and tools, architecture and design, identity and access management, risk management, and cryptography and PKI. So let's go ahead and get straight into some question types and the answers, just to get you guys inside of the mind frame that you need to be in when you're inside the box taking the test. Jamal, a penetration tester, has received zero information about his next client. He is to perform a penetration, a penetration test in 15 minutes. What type of testing is he most likely to perform? So out of this question, you need to decipher what information you need and what you don't need. So um, he hasn't got any information from his next client and he's doing a penetration test. What type of test is he probably perform if he doesn't know anything? It's just like he's an actual hacker, an actual attacker trying to take this network down. Easy, black box. So black box, you have zero information about the infrastructure, about um, the people that work there. You don't have any kind of intel. Only intel that you get is the stuff that you get from whatever type of taxes that you use during your penetration test. You create an authentication server. Your main concern is to ensure there is mutual delegation and authentication. This will happen via a process of ticket granted tickets. What technology are you using? So, the main thing that you need to pull out of this is ticket granting tickets. There's only one of these um, authentication types or server types that would actually authenticate using a ticket granting ticket process. And what would that be? Easy, Kerberos. Easy, easy, easy. Next up, Tim, an analyst, has developed code for a new program. The program is currently being evaluated by team members. The feedback from Tim's team members will be used to improve any issues with the code. What is this process called? Super easy. So, the main thing you need to pull out of this is feedback from Tim's team members, so it's going to be a peer review. So, you create your code, you rock out with your code, and then your buddies, your team members will look it over and say, hey, you forgot a, you forgot a semicolon, or hey, I think you need to put this here, I need, you need to put that there, okay? Uh, Ernest finds a folder with a bunch of documents related to past customers. The documents have information regarding the customer's birth dates, addresses, and phone numbers. Ernest turned these documents into his information assurance rep. The documents will be classified as what? Perfect, easy. Personal, identifiable information, all right? If it contains birth dates, addresses, phone numbers, stuff like that, it will be considered PII, and that's personal, identifiable information. And like I always tell you guys, on the actual exam, um, acronyms, right? Acronyms will uh, come up and slap the shit out you inside of the test. So just make sure that um, all acronyms that you know what they stand for, and if it's um, a protocol or something like that, that you know what it does, and if it breaks, how will the network or the machine react? Just in short, acronyms, just make sure that you feel comfortable with acronyms, okay? Uh, Angelica just downloaded a free navigation app. Several minutes later, she notices her phone isn't working properly. What type of virus could she possibly have? What do we think? What most likely does she have? 
Perfect. Uh, if that huge horse didn't give you a indication, it's um, probably a Trojan horse. So just remember, a Trojan horse is a type of virus that looks like it's doing something good, but it actually does something bad. So she's like, oh, look, I got a free navigation app. And when she downloaded that app, it actually downloaded a Trojan horse, which is a type of virus that masquerades, acting like it's doing something good or something that is cool. In this example, uh, a navigation app, but it's actually um, trying to jack up your device. Okay. Will has completed his penetration test. He starts describing an attack where an employee can set an attack to occur 30 minutes after they're fired. What is this? What is the name of said attack? So if somebody's fired, the attack will actually commence 30 minutes after that. Um, what type of attack has a huge uh, factor or is completely dependent upon triggering at a certain date, certain time, or if a certain event happens out of those um, options? Easy. There's a huge bomb in the middle of the screen and it's a logic bomb so a logic bomb doesn't actually commence doesn't actually execute until a certain event or certain or until a certain time or date right so in this instance um the guy wanted it to happen when somebody was fired so 30 minutes after they fired the machine downloads a virus and starts acting crazy uh, maybe a worm that infiltrates other machines so on and so forth so a logic bomb certain time certain date certain event okay Lewis works at Jimmy's jumping flapjacks every day an employee from pancake palace comes to jumping flapjacks to see what's in the pancake batter this employee is trying to steal proprietary information and will be considered a what um, proprietary is just um, a big word that just means that um, it's stuff that only Jimmy's jumping flapjacks should know um, just like apple has proprietary information as proprietary devices that you can only use with apple products jimmy's jumping flapjacks has pancake batter that they only want to be used there it's theirs not to be used anywhere else so what would you consider the employee that keeps on coming over there trying to figure out what's inside of the batter Super easy. Don't think too much. He would just be a competitor trying to figure out why the hell is everybody over here eating these uh, flapjacks instead of coming over to Pancake Palace to eat my stuff. Jim types Google.com and hold on. Okay, <laughs> okay, shit. <laughs> Jim types Goggle.com instead of Google.com. He is brought to a site that looks identical to Google's. What type of attack? Is this what do we think perfect typo squatting so with typo squatting you know people you know move and shake really fast typing stuff really fast and hackers know that so if you're not paying attention and you want to go to ESPN.com and you type in um, EPN EPSN right and you're not paying attention and you and it comes up and it kind of looks like ESPN.com has sports stats and you start clicking around and you don't know that as soon as you click something, as soon as you move up and down, a virus may be downloaded. Um, it may download a key logger, um, a script kitty. It may just do something that you don't want it to do. So typo squatting is literally when um, hackers you know, create websites, create things that are super close to really popular websites because they know a lot of people have typos and don't pay attention and start clicking around and um, viruses can get downloaded that way, okay? Okay, so a couple uh, extras, right? Just make sure that you are comfortable with acronyms, like I said, and make sure that you just read the question thoroughly and understand, right? Um, on each question, you know, if you're really properly prepared, you should only be on it for a couple minutes, because remember, 90 minutes, 90 questions, you kind of don't have as much time. But like I said, when you're inside the box, if you're properly prepared, um, if you went through my course, I can say that, uh, you know, you'll feel a lot better and things will start uh, coming to you really fast. But um, just make sure you watch out for things like this. Choose all that apply. When if it's one thing that applies, if it's three things that apply, if none of those things apply, make sure you pay attention to that. Uh, what's the next step? 
What's the first step? What's the last step? What's the best option? What's the least uh, expensive? What's the most advantageous? Just make sure that you pay attention to that stuff inside the box and you'll be fine. All right, gang. So that was a quick little test prep. Make sure that you follow us on all social media. Make sure you give this video um, a thumbs up. Make sure you turn on the notification bell so every time a video or test prep or um, a rant, I've never done a rant. I don't know what the hell I said that. But anytime uh, um, anything is uploaded, you'll get a notification. Um, and in the comments below, if you need a full Security Plus course, I got you. Or if you just need an extra edge and just need a practice test, those are in the comments as well. And other than that, I'll see you in class.